Hi, everybody. Uh, good stuff. Look, we have a lot to cover in very little time. I'm in, uh, where am I? I'm in Las Vegas. Spring one is here. Spring one. I'm so excited. It starts tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be great. But I've been thinking. I, like, uh, a lot of people have been asking, uh, you know, I want to move to Spring Boot 3 or I want to move to uh, Spring Security 6 or whatever. And there's some <clears throat> small things here. And I'm like, well, you know, they're not so bad but that you know what they they say they said they, it, it still takes a, over a, a large enough body of of code it can be a problem to migrate even if there are nominal uh changes required to make those jumps and that's a fair point it's a fair point like <clears throat> i always talk about the um the uh jakarta ee migration right that's obviously a, that's gonna be a thing it's it's a trivial thing it's a find and replace but it's still something you got to do um uh, and so I just, I think people have been looking for an answer and frankly, there exists one already um, and it's called open rewrite. Okay. And we're going to talk about that today very quickly, but bearing in mind that I'm also in Vegas and there are people that want to hang here in Vegas. So I'm, I'm going to go, uh, you know, it'll be a good night. Uh, and then tomorrow's the big day. Tomorrow's the opening of the show. So let's get this show on the road. Uh, I'm going to say already, I'm going to start off with the, uh, uh, the, the, you know, backdrop, I'm going to start off against the backdrop of uh, this, which is open rewrite is already used and integrated into a number of things. We have in very, we have the spring CLI, which you can use, which is, has support for open rewrite recipes. We have uh, the spring boot migrator, uh, which is a separate project uh, that can help you move away from sort of other technologies to spring boot. Uh, and then we have, um, you know, even in our tooling efforts, I think uh, there's some refactorings that are enabled by Open rewrite. So you might be already using open rewrite in some of your code, uh, and you know, good stuff, right? But I just wanted. So today we're going to kind of like talk about it, what it is at a, at a high level, and then see how to use it, and then see how to write your own automated refactoring. All right. So with that in mind, let's just dive right into this here. Let me go to my downloads directory. I'll share my screen here in just a second. Okay, here we are. Okay, so present. Share screen, entire screen, very good. Here we go, yes, there we go. So uh, yeah, first things first, let's suppose I have an example here, desktop, um, open rewrite fun, right? And I've got this uh, demo project. So I'm just gonna open this up. This is a, so the first, so that what you need to know is open rewrite is a way to programmatically refactor your code. You can write code to interpret, sort of to evaluate, to analyze a code base and then give you a, what they call a LST, a LST, lossless syntax tree. Yeah, LST, which is a, uh, it's a AST. It's basically the, the, the project does everything up until bytecode compilation, right? It looks at the code and creates a model of the program elements. And then it lets you write code against that LST. You can actually swap things around. You can refactor. You can do all sorts of things against Java. And it's, you know, we're going to look at Java, but my understanding is it also supports other languages. I haven't tried it, have no need to. Um, but I, I guess maybe Python or JavaScript, I don't know, something like that, right? Those are possible as well. Um, and, and then, uh, you know, we even had um, the sort of main uh, architect of, uh, behind this stuff, a, a guy named John Schneider. We had him on the podcast some months ago. And I think on the YouTube channel as well. Um, well, maybe it's just a podcast. But anyway, he was on it. So if you want to learn more about this and what he's doing uh, at his company, uh, Modern, to sort of, provide a software as a service ification of open rewrite, you should definitely check that out. But, uh, and that's a that's a discussion, not a demo really. So, um, okay, so we've got this application, yeah? And let me see, application. And you can see, it's just a Spring Boot 2.7 application. I'm using Spring Security 5 something, and I've got the old uh, uh, style, it's deprecated, right? This is no longer in vogue. I've got the uh, overridden detail service, okay? I've got, um, I'm using Jakarta. I'm using Java EE, but of course, in order to move to Spring Boot uh, 3 and Spring Framework 6, I need to use Jakarta EE, right? That's all. So there's some low-hanging fruit here. Again, it wouldn't be all that bad to do it myself. Easy enough. Uh, but we can use Open Rewrite. And the way you do that is uh, you just set up the plugin, the Open Rewrite plugin. There's an equivalent one for Maven, of course. Um, and then uh, you import recipes, right? You, you well, First of all, you define a recipe. Here's my dependency. I'm gonna use the rewrite spring recipe dependency, okay? So it's a type of dependency that will 
provide a, a recipe for programmatically migrating code from Spring Boot 2.7 to 3.1, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, I have found that this is not perfect. Uh, <laughs> we will have some issues, but it does a good job of doing most of the work for you. Uh, and then you have to tell the Open Rewrite plugin which recipe you want to use because there might be 10 different recipes in a given jar and you might only want to apply one of them. So you stipulate what's the active recipe this way, okay? Um, so good, so I've got that, I've got this Spring Boot application. And this is the idea, this is, I mean, this is, I'm using the open rewrite support for, uh, for uh, Spring Boot, but there are other refactorings. There's plenty of other uh, open rewrite recipes for all sorts of different use cases. Um, and, it, and it doesn't, it's not limited to just Java. I mean, it can do palm.xml modifications, property file changes, you know, uh, pro, uh, YAML file property, uh, YAML file changes. It can refactor most of the elements you think would need to be refactored to allow a new API in a given sort of Spring Boot uh, application. Um, and it, it's just very, very, very powerful. But you could, one of the things I quite like about it is so often, you know, one of the things I, I love about Spring Boot is that it just enables uh, consistency through the use of shared auto configurations, organizational auto configurations, uh, things like you can have your own start that Spring.io because that's open source. All these things make it so that um, uh, you can, as an organization, in effect, deliver and uh, rely upon a framework atop Spring Boot, right? So it's still Spring Boot, but you can create your own component model, right? You can have your own annotations built on top of that component. Uh, you can have your own Spring Boot starters for your organization's requirements. Uh, and as this thing, you know, and it, it's it's also possible to do this in a seamless way through auto configuration uh, and so on. But sometimes you might have, uh, you know, a new API that you want people to move to. Or maybe you've got some new mandate that says you need to, the organization prefers uh, this logging library, you know, for whatever reason, or you want to use that uh, um, style for testing, whatever it is, whatever that use case is, you could easily organizationally distribute your own recipe uh, dependency and then uh, pull that into the builds. And then people can just automatically, when, when there's a new version of this re recipe in the, in the jar and the dependency, they get the new recipe. They can run automatically against their source code, make sure everything looks good and then commit and they're off to the races and that can be delivered sort of just like any other thing. It can be a snapshot, right? You can get the new version uh, every day if you like. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and try this out, okay? So I've got this code. Uh, if I go to my Gradle here, Gradle W, tasks, uh, okay? You can see we've got a lot of different uh, Gradle tasks here, but the three that we care about are rewrite tasks, rewrite discover, which lists all the recipes here. We've got rewrite uh, dry run and rewrite one. Dry run, of course, Gives, it gives the chance to preview the changes by creating a patch file, which is a thing that we used to use before Git made merging so darn simple uh, sometimes. Uh, and then you've got rewrite run, which does the actual sort of, you know, um, destructive modification of the source code, uh, potentially destructive modification of the source code. So we're just going to run this one because I already know what's going to happen. I'm happy to do it. And uh, it takes a hot minute, so we'll let it do its thing. Remember, it's basically compile the code, compiling the code and then providing an API uh, to, to um, in inspect and work with that, okay? So you can see things are already kind of like changing, right? I'm gonna move these things next to each other. Give it a second. Here's the dependencies on the left. Here's the code on the right. Let's just see what happens as things happen, right? It's just running in the background there. Okay. Did it? Oh, there you go. It's done what it's supposed to do. So uh, that ran. You can see we've got a lot more dependencies. These dependencies are actually not appropriate, right? This is because we're using um, Hibernate, right? We're using uh, Hibernate, and uh, it thinks we need to help getting to the new uh, dependencies, I guess. So it, it turns out actually I can delete. This is like I guess this is this assumes I was on Java eight. I don't know why it does because I'm definitely not. But this is, and even if I were, this is completely. Like all of this is a uh, is wrong, right? We don't need any of these uh, dependencies. And uh, let's see here. Sometime this. Okay, we don't need all of that. I don't know why all this is here. I don't. I, I've never added these to my my API ever, right? So from a Spring Boot perspective, those are completely wrong. Um, so I, I would like to see those fixed, but we, we can talk about that later. Um, okay. So there, there there there's that. That's the dependency side. What about this. Well, pretty good, right? Um, you can see it's it's moved our Spring security code from the old 
base class to the new bean style. For some reason, it pre preserved that. It doesn't need to. Uh, and it would have been nice if it had just removed that so it was consistent. But basically, it did the right thing for Spring Security. Um, you can see these types are now Jakarta EE, right? Uh, and so on. It didn't do a great job here. That's because there's no, there's only one small recipe for spring batch migrations. And actually, um, what I, what what it should do is, what it, what the recipe should have done is, first of all, remove that, right? You don't need that annotation anymore in Spring Boot 3. I'm not sure how the recipe would have known that, though. Uh, and the second thing it should have done was to move to the new Step Builder uh, DSL, you know, instead of using the Step Builder factory and the Job Builder factory and so on. But otherwise, yeah, it got us a lot of the way there. And, and so the question then happen, hap, you know, becomes, well, say I want to actually create my own recipe, okay? And that's what we're going to look at next is how to build our own recipe to automate migration, okay? And, uh, you know, this is pretty, it's, it's not hard, I guess. I, I don't know. It's, uh, I didn't find it super intuitive. Maybe you've... I have no doubt that you're smarter than I am, and you'll you'll have found it intuitive. But hopefully, um, this exercise will be uh, valuable for you. So let's go ahead and start it. But uh, what I'm trying to do here, friends, is I'm just logging in to Streamyard, which I use to syndicate this show. That way, I can see questions on the iPad here. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Test, 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 test. Hey, hey, there we go. Can you hear me now? There you go. You can hear me now, I trust? Thumbs up? Not even more? Even even now? Yes. Okay, good. I'm sorry about that. I uh, don't know what happened. Okay. Okay. Um, let's get back to it. Okay, so uh, I'm logged in on the control center. I can see the comments over there. That's great. Now... Present my screen.
Okay. <laughs> okay, so good good stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a simple recipe here, okay? Uh, beautiful, open, rewrite. And I'm, I'm going to be using uh, the Spring Boot Initializer just to generate the project. But really, this is not going to be a Spring Boot project. It'll be a project that works on Spring Boot projects, but that's not the same thing, is it? Um, so downloads, uh, UAO, open, rewrite. Okay. And the first thing first, we got to change the build, don't we? So we're going to go here and github.com. <laughs> okay, friends, first things first. We want to change the build. Let me just go see my notes here because it's not like I do this a lot. Okay, so we don't want the these two, okay? We want this to be a Java library. We want the Maven publish because I want to be able to publish this to my local repository uh, and then consume it from another dependency. Uh, from dependencies, speaking of dependencies, we want uh, we want all of these, don't we? So repositories, Maven Central, um, but we want all these dependencies. Let me just copy and paste. Yikes. Okay. Okay, copy and paste all that. Um, paste all that. Very good. Get rid of all that. Get rid of that. Yeesh. Okay, that's a lot, right? It's a lot. Don't be, but don't be frightened. It's probably fine. I'm a professional. This it's probably gonna be okay. Actually, the thing that really I, I gotta tell you, I've, I've I'm now most of the way through a year, right? It's, I started in January. I'm learning Gradle. Uh, and uh, the one the one little thing I think we can all agree, Maven does better. Uh, is publishing to local M2 repositories. As far as I know, something like this is the only way to get it to work, right? So uh, a recipe to, you know, Josh's, Josh's recipes, okay? Um, okay, so let's, this is a simple, that's all, this is all just so I can do Maven to publish, Maven publish to local, you know, no, Gradle, Published to Maven local. That's what it is, right? PTML. So, okay, what have I done? I've added um, Spring Boot. I'm adding the jar to the class path just so I have some types to compile against, right? Um, but notice that it's not a Spring Boot project. I'm just using it. It's just a regular jar, right? A library. Uh, I'm adding Lumbuck because that makes building recipes easier. I'm adding the rewrite bomb, right? The uh, uh, bill of materials. I'm adding support for rewriting Java code and Java 11, Java 17. Then the comments speak for themselves. You don't need all of them. And for example, I'm not gonna like I'm gonna be building a recipe for Spring Boot uh, three, so maybe I don't need that. Uh, rewrite Maven, sure. Rewrite YAML, great. Properties XML, great. All that kind of stuff, right? And of course, you want test support, so we've got that as well. Um, and then, let, okay, so I guess the first thing we should do is let's go through the tutorial example. Okay, the tutorial example is pretty simple, so we'll do that one first. Um, we're going to build a simple hello world recipe. So let's get rid of that. That won't work. And we're going to say, uh, say hello recipe. Okay. And this will extend recipe. Oh, P. Okay. And this needs to have, it's, so recipes need to be serializable. Yeah. Um, so. They need to be serializable because I don't know why, but they do. They need to be the the, the definition and all that stuff. I guess has to be serializable. So uh, at value, you know, is a Lumbach annotation, but it'll have the benefit of generating, uh, you know, getters, two string equals hash code, all arguments constructor, you know, etc. Uh, and then we want equals and hash code super equals false. Okay. So we're we're creating a, a, a simple recipe, and this recipe um, is going to just say hello. Basically, it's going to refactor source code um, to uh, to add a hello method to any class that it finds. Okay, very simple example, pretty useless, but kind of interesting. 
Okay, and it'll give us the, a field for all the things that you have to worry about. So let's say we have a field here, uh, private final string, you know, FQN. That's the class that we want to modify. And remember, we're going to do this. Uh, let's see. Why is it not okay to be? Okay, we want this constructor. Okay, so we've got a constructor. And I guess this needs to be public. JSON creator. There we go. Got that. Um, What's the issue now? Why is it complaining? Oh, it needs to implement a few methods. Fine. So go here. We're going to go here. Get display name, right? That's this. So this is going to be called the, uh, you know, this is how we, it's called say hello. Okay. Okay. And then we have another one here called uh, get description. Uh, description. And um, adds a hello method to a class, okay. and what else do we need? Well, this is gonna be a JSON property, so we need to be able to configure it with a property. Um, I'm gonna call that FQN, good. And what else? Well, I guess that's that's the basic definition of the, re the recipe. Let's now create a simple test. We have to actually define the recipe, but I mean, that's the basic skeleton of the recipe. That's what I should have said. That's what you know recipes look like. So we have to write a simple test now before we start running the, the business logic because we don't know what we're building against. So the rewrite test looks like this, okay? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do a defaults method here and we're gonna say spec.recipe new say hello recipe and the class uh, will be, you know, the class name final string FQN will be um, hello dot foo bar. Okay, so this dot FQN. There you go. And uh, let's create some test methods now. Void add hello to foo bar. Okay, and we're just going to use these convenient base methods here to specify what we think uh, our um, original class will look like, so package hello, and then class foobar, right? Good. And what we expect the refactoring to do when it's done is to put this in a new package, or same package rather, but create a new method called hello. Okay, avoid the public string hello. Okay, return hello from hello dot full bar. Okay, that's what we're expecting to happen. Now, obviously, it's not gonna work, right? If I run this test right now, it should fail. Let's just go ahead and do that though. Always hurts to have a negative against which to compare notes and establish state. Yep. Okay, good. So that's working, right? We've got that working. Um, Oh, the test, right, this is a bad test, so where is this one? Over here, get rid of that. Go here, that test is no longer appropriate, right, okay. Run this again. Okay, add hello. So that failed, right? So that we that we know that failed, and that's that that because the recipe doesn't work. So now we have to implement it. Okay, this is like where we can see all how all things come kind of come together. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that here. Now this is the recipe. I it wasn't it wasn't that bad. I mean, so the normal there are other kinds of recipes. I know, like for example, this recipe. What we're going to do is we're going to add it to like a catalog, a, a manifest describing which recipes are available in the jar. Uh, and then anybody can consume any one of those recipes. Um, and recipes get run, you know, there's the, the plugins in the, the Maven plugin and the Gradle plugin will automatically visit all the code and then pass your recipe. It'll pass all the code elements through your recipe and you get a chance to inspect it and accumulate state and so on um, <clears throat> across any one kind of uh, file, right? There's also a scanning recipe, which allows you to accumulate state across all the files taken together. Um, but basically, you, this is what I've seen. And again, I'm no expert. Um, uh, this is pretty common. It's just having a recipe. Okay. So uh, let's see. FQN. By the way, also, you're advised to make this sort of documented. You know, display name equals FQ, fully 
qualified name. Uh, the description is a fully qualified class name. And the uh, example will be a.b.c. Okay, pretty straightforward. Good. Everybody with me so far? Good. So let's do that now. Um, you can also use the non null, you know, the, the sort of Lombaki stuff, Lombaki, Lombaki elements there. Um, okay, so now the, the, this is it's pretty straightforward here. You just create a visitor, right? The visitor does most of the work. So we're going to create a private static class, say hello visitor, implements, extends Java ISO visitor. Um, passing in the execution context. And uh, and then this, again, we'll come back to what this is all doing pretty soon here, but let's just pass that in, new, like that, okay? And then the visitor gets the chance to actually interact with your, your types, okay? So let's go ahead and implement that. That's the hard part, and that's where most of the work is. First thing first, what are we gonna do? Well, we have to, when we visit, when we, we wanna override the hook to visit a class. You can see all these callback methods here. We want to visit arrays and methods and while loops and identifiers and labels and all. Look at these callbacks. You get a chance to visit all these different discovered elements and you can store state about, oh, okay, well, I want to refactor this or refactor that or whatever. So here, I want to visit a class declaration. Each class declaration, I want to call back. Okay. And what I want to do in that class is to uh, identify if it well, first of all, if it's the class that I want to modify on, I want to make sure it doesn't already have a method. And then once I'm confident of both those things being true, it's the right class and it doesn't already have that hello method, then I want to make sure that we um, add the method. Okay, so have, that means we actually have to transform the source, the source code. So you do that all in here, okay? So return class declaration, that's the default, okay? And we're going to take this in, thing that's been passed to us and return it as a response. That's our contract there, yeah? Um, so first thing first, uh, is this the right class? Bar, uh, right class, uh, is right class equals. Now we want to take the class declaration, get the type and make sure it's not null, right? So, so, uh, actually, so it, wait, is this a add, you know, there we go. Simple. So if it's null or, um, or class declaration dot get type dot get fully qualified name equals this dot fqn. Oh, they don't have access. It's not okay here. Static uh, that dot fqn. Okay. Um, if it doesn't equal that, right? So if it's bad, if uh, bad, turn class declaration. Yeah. Or I guess I suppose I could do it another way. If not bad, then blah, 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 and then just return that. That's probably a little bit better, okay? Uh, now, once we've done that, so, you know, it's not like it's a, we, we just don't want to process the code. We're not interested in it, that's all. That's why we're moving on. So you don't throw an exception here. I shouldn't have used the word bad. I just say, maybe it should have been like, is candidate or something, you know? Okay, good. Now, uh, what else do I want to do? Well, uh, I want to see that I have, no existing method. So I want to find existing hello method equals uh, class declaration dot dot get body uh, dot get statements dot stream dot filter. And I'm, I'm looking at all the statements in the class, right? And I want to filter them out. I want to say, okay, if the statement is a method declaration, so method declaration, um, and if it is, then I want to map it, right? I want to say uh, statement to, uh, I want to take j dot method declaration dot class dot cast statement. Of course, that turns into a lambda. Uh, and then I'm going to say any match. Does the method declaration match the one I'm looking for, right? So I get the uh, met name and I get the simple name and I, I say, does it equal hello? Whoops, hello even, okay? So if that's true, this is gonna be a Boolean, right? This is a Boolean value. If it matches, then 
obviously, um, we don't want that, right? So, okay, so uh, if it's a candidate and if it has, has existing, so if has existing hello world method, um, turn class declaration. And you know what? I'm thinking about this more and more. Uh, I, I, I don't like this. I like the uh, return mission. There we go. Get rid of that. Very good. So I'm at a, a, uh, like a, I think of it like a like setting traps for for bad paths of execution, right? I'm I'm setting up a trap here. I'm saying, okay, if this is this, then return. If this is this, then return. I, I don't know. This is not exactly my favorite kind of code, but it works. Okay. <clears throat> so finally, if we're down here. All clear, right? Like this is this is where we want to be. We're in the end zone here. Um, that's a sports metaphor. I don't know what it means. It sounds like something that should be said though. Uh, but okay, so var cursor equals. Uh, let's see. So here, so what we're trying to do now is we've identified that this is a class that needs a method. It doesn't already have one, uh, and it's got the right name. And uh, and so what we need to do now is to figure out where we are. We want to have coordinates um, so that we can tell the API where to apply the changes, where do we insert this new code? And the way you do that is you create a coordinate and you can create the coordinate by getting a cursor uh, and, and you know cloning the cursor that is already being created by this, this uh, thing. Okay, so new cursor, new cursor, uh, and I'm gonna get the current cursor and I'll, uh, what am I gonna do? I'll say class declaration, get body. Okay, so there's that and then I'll get the last statement in the class, right? So I'll say class that declaration dot get body. Uh, uh, okay, get that body, and get the coordinates for that. And I want to get the last statement. So Java coordinates. Okay, these are Java coordinates. And finally, I want that to be. I want to return this, right? Um, with the new body, but I have to change the body, okay? And so I'm gonna change the body by creating a template, a Java, uh, a Java template, okay? And I'm gonna do that up here, so I don't have to do it each time. So private final, uh, private final string method, whatever, I don't care, right? Just figure this out later. And the method, you know, you can imagine public string Hello, because you could programmatically build this up, right? You can actually use the API to programmatically write Java code, but uh, I, you know, we have multi-line strings now; it's not a big deal. So I'm just going to say return hello uh, from from uh, this, right? Just hello. Let's just try that first. Good. There you go. So I'm going to return hello, and then I'm going to create a Java template out of that, which is a a templatized version of that Java code. So Java template template equals Java template dot builder this dot method dot build. Yeah. Okay. And then we want to do all this. So we now we go down here and we say with this new body apply the template apply cursor and then uh fast statement coordinates right and then we want to try the fully qualified class name. And we want to apply it. Okay, so that's that's basically it. I'm saying create the, return the existing class as it is, but change the body. And then what are you gonna what are you gonna do? You're gonna apply this template. Uh, um, the template's gonna apply itself at this location, this coordinate, um, and at this you know actual location. And then we're gonna use this class to pass it in. Okay. Um, Oh, that's the template. By the way, that that's you know what that is? This last bit right here? Yeah, parameters. So FQN. So if I wanted to, I can go back up here and from this. Right? So I can do hello. There you go. This will get templatized with the parameter that I pass in. Okay. Hence the name templating. Okay, good. So I'm I'm happy with that. Let's see, let's see if it runs. Okay. This is where, you know, proof's in the pudding, right? So run this. Uh oh, what did I do wrong? Add the method. Oh, it has to end with a period. <gasps> That's so cool. Okay, you have to actually have that. <laughs> they really care about the ergonomics because remember, this is a build tool thing. It's not just like a Java API. 
So um, there you go. So let's try that again. Neat. Okay, what did I do wrong this time? Unexpected results. Uh, okay, expected package hello. Okay, but was. Oh, that doesn't feel too. Oh, is it the spacing maybe? Let's try that out. Huh? I wonder if it's the space. Um, where did I put my method here? This is the other thing: is that the open rewrite is pretty. It, it's not. It's not actually doing space sensitive comparisons, but it is doing space sensitive, a space uh, aware basically. So what is this? What is the difference here? But was package foobar. Okay. Um, hello from hello. Foobar. Actual what was this? Oh, okay. I don't care. Like, that's fine. This is still the. Uh, this is what I wanted. I can. <laughs> I'm cheating here, people. But it's not really cheating. It's just. Uh, it's cheating. Whatever. I'm. I'm. All I'm doing is I'm. Changing a test to to match the bug. Right. This is actually fine. I don't care. If I, if I got that result, I'd be happy. So, uh, let's see here. Nope. Nope. You don't get to. It doesn't get to match. I don't get to have that today. But. Expected package hello, but was package hello class foobar, public string. Oh, it's the I've got this uh, line. Is it? Okay, come on. There we go. All right, so we have a simple recipe that took a lot of effort, but we did it. Go team, good stuff. Now, what we're gonna do is we want to package this up so that others can use it, right? And so here we have to describe our recipe. Uh, let's go back to this. We're going to create a folder here. Recipes. Get rid of that. We're not it's not a Spring Boot project. Meta inf. Yeah. And then create a new file called aot.yaml. And we're going to copy and paste all this. Oh dear. Okay. <clears throat> and so we just put that. It's bootiful open rewrite, right? That's this package right here. And you put that here. Say hello recipe. Yeah? Good. So, uh, you know, this is a support hellos, okay? Uh, hellos. We're going we're gonna to give it a logical name. This doesn't have to correspond to anything, right? It, it doesn't, I don't think it does anyway. Um, hellos. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, okay, so that's the file definition. Obviously, I don't care about this. Good. All right. So I've got my uh, yeah, my manifest describing the recipe so that it can be picked up by the plugin. And this is, you know, it's this last bit right here that you're going to use to choose which is the active recipe. Okay. So now let's deploy this to my local machine here. Uh, Gradle. Uh, publish to Maven local. Okay. So I should have dot m2 repository. And uh, what was the build ID? Beautiful. Okay. okay. Wait. Let's just dot m two beautiful. Okay. There. So now let's see if it worked. Neat. All right. There we go. So now we can consume it. Let's go do that. Uh, we can go back here, create a new, you know, new project. That's great. Uh, hit enter. Open this up. UAO uh, demo. And go here. And we're just gonna, we're, again, we're just gonna be a consumer now. We're gonna do exactly what I showed you earlier with the Spring Boot project. Uh, we're just gonna consume this recipe, but it's gonna be our recipe, which is like. Really kind of cool if you think about it, right? Um, okay, so implementation uh, org no, implementation is going to be it's not implement it's rewrite. So I guess we need a plugin first, don't we? So let's do that here. We'll go up here uh, id org dot open rewrite dot rewrite version. 6.1.24, okay, neat. 
then we want the plugin itself. So for repositories, we have to also tell it to look in Maven local, which just blows my mind. Why isn't that, why isn't that my default? Uh, dependencies, okay, here's our custom recipe, our rewrite recipe. So it'll be uh, bootyful, uh, I forgot, bootyful, and then what was the artifact name? Settings, that Gradle, it's called open rewrite, bootyful open rewrite. And I suppose the version is 001 snapshot, was it? So that Gradle, yeah, based all that. Copy and paste. Sure. Uh, and of course, we need the platform of materials. So org. Open rewrite. Recipe. Rewrite. Recipe. Bomb. Two dot two zero. Okay. Whew. All right. Now <laughs> we have this class. Let's go to our class. Uh, demo, I guess, and we're going to create a, um, we are going to use it, right? So I wonder how that would work. I guess we have to, so we have to specify class, my class, right? Okay, and uh, then in the build.gradle, we actually have to run it, and uh, we have to specify the active recipe, the active Re rewrite recipe. So we go here, rewrite <clears throat> active recipes. Okay. And it's going to be a logical one that we just created here, right? This one over here. Uh, that. What's this? And then I, I don't know how, you how you're supposed to specify the parameters. I wonder what happens if we don't specify it. Rewrite. Right. Does it do it for everything? I mean, that doesn't feel right. Mm. Nope, we need to actually figure out. So open rewrite. We need to figure out how to uh, running recipes on a Gradle project without, with, uh, okay. Do, 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 do. Plugins that apply. Okay, so this is ah, so this is how you would do it. You you pass in the parameters, but my question is, um, do I have to do that for everything like that consumes it? And I guess I would, huh? So add there, okay. Activate the recipe so it can be run. So here's the recipe, but how do I specify the parameters? Run a recipe with YAML configuration. Aha, there you go. So where is rewrite.yaml? How to write rewrite.yaml, open rewrite. So meta inf rewrite. Oh, I guess it's just a, can it just be like local here in the root? Okay, let's try it. Rewrite.yaml. Let me go back to here. All that. Okay, that seems easy enough. So the build is called here. Type is a recipe. I'm gonna run that recipe list. It's the actual recipes themselves. So here's I'm specifying which recipes to use, and uh, the recipe list includes this one. Suppose this is the actual thing, and then the So it's a org, so it's just beautiful. Dot open rewrite dot say hello recipe. And the parameter is FQN. And uh, the parameter has to be uh, copy reference. Okay. Paste that in. Okay. Block sequence. What did I do? 
So recipe list. Hold on, one second. Okay, so um, I don't know. It probably is it's probably fine. Let's try it. So go here, great old W. Rewrite, run. Not found. Is it the type? I feel like this should be here. Wait, oh, did I not add my custom one? Is it here actually? So it's a uh, say hello recipe. Do I have that in the class path? Uh, Why is it saying so? It, it wasn't the parsing with the YAML actually. Recipe is not found. It's not. It's saying it doesn't find the recipe itself. Active recipe. Okay. Um. Happen. Recipe not found. Beautiful hellos. Did I not define the open rewrite YAML file for the actual recipe itself? I don't think I did, did I? Ah, that's probably what it was. This is resources meta inf. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I think I forgot to put it in this. I went to a bet. So. Okay. Okay, now let's try again this time. Okay, now we run this again. Hmm? Hey, hey. Uh, that worked. Okay, so demo application didn't work at all. Hmm. Oh well. Let's see here. Did I just not specify? So, how do I know if it worked? Com example demo my class. Like, let's go back to this. Say hello recipe. And let's visit this. And we'll say, okay, like, uh, oh, wait, if it's not a candidate. So is not candidate, right? So, okay. It's not a candidate. Okay, we'll run that. Um, it already has a hello method. And then otherwise, we just do this change. Okay. Good, so let's run that now. Let's just deploy that. Go over here again. I'm, I think I'm doing something wrong with the configure. I mean, it, does it work? Do we even know if it got the right parameters? Actually, I should have printed that out, huh? So let's try that again as well. Just about uh, working on this dot uh, on FQN. It's, it's not a candidate. 
Oh, problems parsing this. Ah, uh, that's interesting. Source main resources. So does that have to be in the meta inf directory? That's the real question here, friends. The real question. Meta inf rewrite. Good. Does that have to be there? Okay. Which class? Why couldn't it parse this? I am very confused about this part. Is it like, like that? So what did I do wrong? It's using this recipe. Wait a minute. Ah, uh, this doesn't. Root of the project directory. So that should be down here. This is the custom one that I will have defined here. That should be this. Add this. Say hello recipe. And then FQN. I like that the YAML is not complaining anymore. So then the file here, same as before. Copy references. Okay, maybe it's just that. Maybe it's just a matter of like not writing a correct YAML. Please work. Nope, no idea. How bizarre. Working on null. Build that Gradle. Command Shift I. Did I not publish this to Maven Local? I don't see it printing out the uh, new uh, fully qualified name. I, I don't know. This is very strange. Okay, I have clearly got a problem here that isn't related to the actual... It's just a matter of configuration. So for now, just going to cheat here a little bit. Okay, let's just get rid of the option because uh, I don't know how to make it work otherwise. Don't want to have to figure it out right now. Okay, good. So we're going <laughs> to hard code this exact particular class. Actually, let's get rid of this. RMRF. Okay, repository. Moodyful. And then install that, go over here, take three. Oops, this is uh, Gradle rewrite run. Okay. There, that worked. Ah. So clearly it's just, I don't know what I, I did, right? But uh, there's something about the way you configure it I don't know uh, clearly. Uh, but yeah, you can see that when you get it working, it does the right thing. So uh, changes have been made to source main demo application by this recipe uh, right here and under this jar artifact. Please review and commit the results. And obviously, uh, what I did was I just reformatted it, but this is what you would do normally. You just go there, get diff. You don't have a git repository, but if I did, you could do git diff. 
Uh, and then just, if you're happy with the changes, commit it, right? Now, this is a pretty trivial example, my friends. It is the one from the tutorial. That said, I, uh, I'm pretty lucky. I'm very lucky. I work on the spring team. And uh, the spring team is full of people that are way, 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 way smarter than I am. So, so much smarter. And, um, and so I got one of them to kind of sit with me and teach me some stuff, okay? And uh, one of them is Alex Boyko, who works on the tooling side of the Spring stuff. So if you've ever used Visual Studio Code or uh, Eclipse uh, Spring Tool Suite uh, or some of these other things, you've probably used some of the work that he's worked on. And he, he and I sat down just to build a very simple recipe that um, looks for an existing type that is serializable, that is a Spring Bean, and then makes them uh, and then registers an AOT hint. And it's a pretty simple example, but it's a bit more complex than the one that we just created. You might want to take a look at that if you have some time. So there's there's this one as well. Um, a very simple example, but it gives you some, perhaps it gives you some ideas. I don't know. Um, thanks, Alex, again. Really, I, I learned a ton just hanging out with him. He's a, a legend um, among legends in the team. And that's that, my friends. That was a, I, I got, I got tar pitted there with the uh, configuration for the fully qualified name. Mm, but you know we'll get there. Either way, hopefully this gave you a sense of what you, you what you can do, what's possible. Uh, uh, the potential is enormous. Imagine taking hundreds of Spring Boot projects, all using Spring Boot 2.7, apply some of these recipes automatically on Moss, and then they just get upgraded for you automatically. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be neat? I'm a fan. I'm a believer. So, uh, friends, it's been fun, but I'm gonna go. It's been a lot of fun. Um, let's see here. Let me see if I have any questions though before I do that. <sighs> unwanted cars and YAML. Yeah, very good point. I missed a dot in the recipe description. Yeah, okay. I should have looked at the comments. Um, and why am I not writing the recipes in, in Kotlin? That's a great point, too. All these are great questions, friends. Um, but thank you for hanging out. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, and I'll see you. If you're in spring one, I'll see you around, okay? it's uh, Don't be a stranger. Let's come say hi. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Oh, by the way, also, just speaking of spring one, speaking of spring one, Speaking ever so, so briefly about Spring One, did you? I've only shown this like a million times, but it just cracks me up to no end. Did you see this? Did did you? Did you? Did you see this? This is my new favorite thing ever: the history of Spring. You can just go here. It's Spring One .io, history of Spring. Yeah, there you go. I'll let you. Play the game yourself, but it's awesome. It's just, it's great. 20 years of spring this year, and uh, it's going to be good. All right, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a great day.